My name's Alan Bateman, and I'd like to introduce you to this hobby of stick dressing. Uh, we'll start with the simple sticks, of course, and move progressively on to the more difficult ones. But the good thing about this hobby is you do not need to spend a lot of money on tools or equipment. The average vice, screwdriver, chisels, the sort of things you'll find around any garage are the sort of things we're going to use. First of all, let's look at the raw materials and join a friend of mine. Not on this particular, in this particular woods. Yep. And I must admit, they've always been jolly good. Well, I have my own sort of places I go each year. Yeah, but uh, it's always nice to go somewhere different. You never know, you know, what you're going to find. Well, that's very true. And I think each year, you know, you just need to be able to move around from place to place. Otherwise, you just, you just cut them out too fast. That's right. Yeah. But just tell me what happened. This is obviously, this is obviously what you're showing me is the start of it. Yeah. Did. Here's the vine, it's grown around from the bottom here and it's gradually taking a strangle hold upon the stick. Mm. At this stage, I don't think it's really um, gone into the wood sufficiently to, to get enough twist in it. Probably another year or two and it will grow in a bit more. But you see, you use the word vine, but that in fact is honeysuckle, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, the same effect can actually be got by some people put wire around the sticks, yeah. you know. Only problem is when it grows very nicely, someone else comes and cuts it before. <laughs> The old saying yeah. is, cut it, we cut it when you see it, yeah. and don't wait about it. That's right, but that's one in an early stage, but it certainly will be a very nice yeah. stick in a year or two's time. It's going to be quite heavy, that, though, isn't it? It could be. It's yeah. hard to say. When this, when this vine bites in, sometimes it does reduce the growth yeah. um, of the stick. So cool. it, it'll be a nice one to keep an eye on for the future. An example, anyhow. Great, OK. This is a pretty good example of the sort of stick that I'm always looking for. It has a taper on it, meaning it's quite thick here and tapers off towards the top. Mm -hmm. But most importantly of all, it's got some most beautiful colours in it. Now, because of that, I would cut a stick that possibly isn't normally um, cut, because it's a bit bent, but it's worth, it's worth the trouble to straighten it afterwards. So, let's cut it, shall we? Okay, shall I, or after you? Be my guest. Right. Take it down oh. and then take it off afterwards. The first thing to do is to remove the pith from the middle here. And you can see quite clearly where the pith is. You get quite a strong white line around the side where the solid bone is. So let's put it in the vise and do that. Whilst drilling, if you make a circular movement with the drill, this brings out the pith around to the diameter at the end leaving a clean hole and also makes a conical shaped hole so that the peg on the end can be actually graduated and this makes a good joint. Right, now we've drilled the hole, it's time to find a suitable shank to fit the piece of horn. Now I've found a stick or a shank that will suit this piece of antler but we do have a very different problem underneath here. This has a very elongated round hole. If you get a piece like this, it's best to plug it with a piece of wood, glue it in, cut it off, and drill a hole in it roughly the size of this steel studding here. Then you insert the steel studding, glue it in place, and cut off roughly two to three inches below. A hole is then drilled down the stick, and the studding goes in like so, and the marriage is made that way. Let's go back now to our original piece of horn. The next thing to do then is to get a peg carved on the end of the stick that will fit this hole. And to do that, the first thing to do is measure it. So if you just stick any object, the knife will do here, and measure the hole like so. Then run it down the shank and start to cut just above the mark. sure there's a pencil line on the horn and on the stick so that each time you replace the horn you go back to exactly the same place. Another important aspect of the stick of course is the actual joint here and to do that if you hold it up to the light you can see if there are any gaps around there 
If there are, of course, you need to adjust the surfaces so that it sits down really well. The next stage really is gluing. And to do that, we will also glue the two horn tips so that you get a really good contact and so that the glue actually spurts out around the edge a bit. This is why I personally like to do this part first, that this glue goes right around that joint at the bottom. Then put some pressure on it, like so. And again, we've got a nice little edge of glue underneath, showing us that there's nowhere around the joint that's starved of glue. Once everything's set like that, the best thing to do is put it somewhere Right, now I'm using the file here to plumb the actual shape of the antler down into the stick so that it makes it a nice joint. And I've got the main of the meat off there, so that's quite a good shape. Next, we'll move over to the emery cloth. The next stage would be, in fact, to polish the horn. We won't do that yet, though. Let's take these two tips to the stage that that's at. So the first thing we'll do is get the file and file around the edge and start on these two. And finally, of course, to put a rubber or steel tip on it. But that, and that feels a very nice stick too.